there. Okay, so we are here to learn from our professor, Dr. G.C. Cavita, and she will be sharing with us from our own wealth of knowledge and experience and wisdom to share with us on overcoming trauma, especially in the areas of relationship. So who is Dr. G.C. Cavita? Joad Vara Jengala Cavita, <laughs> professor, internationally acclaimed inspirational speaker known as the happiness woman, positive psychologist, physiotherapist, psychometric test professional, teacher trainer, QPR gatekeeper trainer for suicide prevention, wow, social activist for world peace and happiness, have cancelled almost 65,000 women all over the world and adolescents till 2024 and 2022 voluntarily on happiness under the title happiness is your birthright oh yes i agree with you professor is she is honorarily positioned in an area of vice president of isri isra india editorial board member international president Department of Health Sources World, Central Team National Coordinator, Wellness for India, Crowning Action Network, and finally, Project Head for SAM VEDNA, a collaborative in in initiative of ICANN and NCPCR. So allow me now to welcome Professor, Doctor, GC, sorry for the for my flyer, but GC Kavita, to our first masterclass of this week. You are welcome. Man. Okay, and I think the. The problem might be from your side because we can't hear you anymore. We can't hear you. No, we still uh, can't hear you. Am I audible? Absolutely um, right. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. we can hear you now. Yeah. I yeah, think I think I think, I think yes. I think my <laughs> voice is much louder than uh, my speakers. That's what I understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. All is yes. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so wonderful uh, greetings from India. Namaste. Uh, and uh, and and it's such a beautiful day at UK as I can understand. It's a bank holiday today. And I'm sure that all of you must be uh, having a good time and plan for something great entertainment. And I'm sure I'll try to make it as entertaining and informative as possible, such that you feel the holiday is not, uh, you know, much wasted. Uh, so going back to uh, the trauma, uh, I have two sessions today and tomorrow. Uh, so today I would like to give the basic foundation of trauma much before we talk about how do we resolve the trauma, we need to really, really understand the meaning of trauma and what do you mean by trauma and how does it come and what are the basis for it and how does a person respond to a trauma and, and the ways they look at the trauma. Probably these are the things that I would be covering in this masterclass today. And tomorrow, probably I would like to take up the strategies for overcoming the trauma, that how do you look at it and how do you resolve the traumatic experiences that you have uh, in a way pertaining to uh, the non-professional things because certain traumas need, definitely does do need the professional support 
uh, you cannot resolve all the traumas by yourself. Uh, so I would like to tomorrow probably uh, talk about uh, the ways that one can resolve trauma to a certain extent from their side and from your own side, uh, then how can you really look into it? Uh, so let me now start with the basic foundations of understanding the trauma uh, with respect to relationships. As we all know very well that uh, 100 and more than 130 million children are born annually, annually across the world. And when a child is born, the child is born thinking the child is adequate and complete and completely deserving in all the aspects. The child is born because any any being that takes birth on this planet comes with the very basic notion that it has the free will, it has the independence, it has all the abilities and it is completely deserving to survive on this planet. But when the child is born, some children, some babies are welcomed with a lot of enthusiasm with a lot of happiness. There is overwhelming joy in the family to welcome the baby. There are some babies who are born with challenges, both the physical challenges the baby is born with due to some uh, birth defects, or it could be the environmental challenge challenges where the primary care caregiver or the parent is not really, really ready to welcome the baby, ready to welcome the baby. So this is the basic aspect that we are trying to understand with respect to how the babies are born on this planet. Once this is done, the baby is born, it is both the nature, the GNA, the DNA, and uh, the genes inside and the nature, we are talking about nurture and the nature. Nature is the DNA with which the child is born and the nurture, the environment around the child that makes up the personality. This is, this is something because only the only uh, the the genes does not make a personality. The environment doesn't make a personality. It is a combination of both the nature and the nurture that really builds a personality. This is something important that we need to understand. And the second most important thing that we have to understand, uh, you know, while understanding trauma is. As the child is physically growing, the brain structure also grows. When I say brain structure, uh, related to trauma, probably I would like to talk about the three important brain structures that play an important role in understanding trauma or, or, or in the trauma processing uh, process. The first one is the amygdala. Amygdala is a little small structure of the brain that really, uh, you know, uh, processes the emotions and identifies the threat around. It says there is something threat, you know, don't, don't go there, stop yourself, because let us understand the purpose of every being that is born on this planet. The first major purpose is to survive. Survival is the core, core uh, essence of anything that is living on this planet. And one, when one has to survive, one needs to understand that, that identifying or detecting the threats around and protecting ourselves is the first, first basis of, basis of, you know, the survival. So considering this, the little part, the little part, the amygdala, amygdala you know, it, it detects, it, it, it processes the emotions, it detects the threat around to see what is happening. The second important structure that today we are going to talk about related to trauma is the hippocampus. Hippocampus is that part of the brain structure that stores the memory, it forms the neural patterns and it stores the memory because any experience that comes along is understood by the previous memories that we already have within us, by the neural patterns. The third most important structure that today we are going to talk about with respect to trauma is the cortex. 
is the cortex. Cortex is that part of the brain that deals with the language development, that deals with the perceptions, that deals with understanding a situation, that deals with creating new experiences, you know, taking the old experiences old experiences. So this is the next thing that we need to understand as the basic foundation before understanding, uh, you know, uh, you know, before understanding uh, the situation. The next thing that we have to understand in the process is there has been a study that, that said that most of the traumas, the root cause of most of the traumas are the inner child traumas that have been established during the childhood during the childhood some traumas they appear immediately and some traumas are repressed which appear in the later stage of the life which do not appear immediately which are repressed which are repressed so much before I get further deeper into understanding a trauma, we need to now understand it is time to understand the attachment, uh, attachment styles. As a primary caregiver, the primary caregiver could be the mother, the father, the parents, the grandparents or the maternal uncle or maternal aunt or it could be anybody who is taking care of the child, who is taking care of the child. The primary caregiver, based on the kind of attachment style the child has with the primary caregiver, the child develops a personality. When I say a personality, the discipline, knowing the boundaries, knowing what is right and wrong, ability to understand the situation in a right way, and ability to know and identify themselves, bringing in their own personal identity and the way they behave with others, the way they create the relationships. When I say a personality, personality is a, is a complex complex structure of many, 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 many uh, variables, variables. So based on the kind of attachment style the child has with the primary caregiver, the child develops a personality, develops a personality which is going to do good for the child. Okay, so there are, gen there are four major, uh, major attachment styles which uh, either create a trauma or which has a possibility of creating a trauma in the child or not. Probably the first, the first attachment style that we are going to talk about is a secure attachment style. In a secure attachment style, between a, a primary caregiver and a child, the discipline is, 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 is very much within the limits. It's not overwhelming or it is not neglected. The second one, the second is the child is given the physical needs, the emotional needs at the appropriate time and duration for which the child needs so. The child is given independence. The child is given freedom to talk of what the child is feeling. So there is an emotional regulation that is happening in the body of a child. And the child is given an ability to know his or her interests and behave or given freedom freedom to, to behave in a better way. This is a secure attachment style, which uh, I would not say is difficult, but because of the existing situations uh, with the people, with, 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 with the evolving society, it's not all the time possible. The second kind of personality, uh, a personality that comes from a secure relationship, they grow up to be very wise, very happy, uh, confident, uh, person with, with, with adults with good self-esteem, sense of worth, their ability to navigate a situation is good. They understand a situation better. They know how to talk. They know how to negotiate. They know they, know they are very happy people. So this kind of personality is developed from a very secure attachment style. Next, we are talking about an anxious attachment style. When I say an anxious attachment style, this kind of personality, this kind of this kind of children, or this kind of of attachments, uh, wherein the child is uh, the child is given too much of 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 uh, of 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 
everything, everything, the child is not being given freedom to do. There is a lot of codependence of the child on the parent. And when this kind of parenting, when a child grows up, the child does not have a positive image about himself or herself, whereas the child has a positive image about others. Because the child feels the child can do something only if there is somebody present. Uh, to cite an example where the trauma can be developed, let us say this person after growing up gets into a relationship, gets into a relationship, right? The girl or the boy the leaves the person because they are so much codependent on the other person for both their physical and emotional needs. When it does not happen, the trauma is so much inside them that it is so difficult for them to come out of it. So this is an attachment style and how it can impact the trauma of the person to understand this. The third category that we are talking about is an avoidant personality. When we say an avoidant attachment style, this is a kind of a, uh, this is a kind of an attachment style where there is a physical uh, physical uh, I mean uh, needs are being met, but emotional needs are not met. There is an emotional distance between the primary caregiver and the child. These children, when they grow up, when they grow up, they have a very positive about themselves. They don't have positive uh, image about the others. They do have the trust issues because they were not given. They were not given when they want. And this is, this is, this is, they, they cannot really handle the relationships. So when we have to understand the trauma element of such kind of a personality, they don't get attached to relationships so easily and there is always an element of doubt there is always an element of you know uh, the element of you know uh you know a trust issue that comes in wherein they feel probably they don't mean it okay we do see we so we do see some adults in our workplace in our family in our relationships where they don't trust anybody you know it's so difficult for them to have a trust factor and this is an impact that has come from the childhood and the next category is is highly neglected childhood where the child a neglected or abused childhood where the child has been physically, emotionally, sexually, verbally so much abused and has been living in a, uh, in a family full of violence of all kinds that the child, when the child grows into an adult, the child neither trusts himself nor others. So the trauma is developed again there because there is no there is no trust there is no self esteem there is no sense of worth there is no belief and if you notice all the anti social elements that are in the society are a byproduct of this kind of attachment style because they were not cared they were not given love they were not given anything rather they were being abused physically emotionally sexually or or it could be anything and which created lot of impact but that they don't have any good feeling about themselves nor the others so they say this society is not a place worth living so everybody is bad everybody is bad you know this is where the antisocial elements do come this is how the antisocial elements are, are are you know raised in the society so understanding the attachment styles before understanding the trauma is so crucial because 75% of the trauma, the risk factor is a childhood, uh, childhood, uh, the traumas that has come because of attachment style or which has been in the child due to some kind of, uh, you know, uh, variation. So understanding this is very, 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 very important. So once there is a trauma that the child has undergone, undergone, as the child is growing up into a complete adult, any trigger from the environment, any trigger from the environment, I spoke about that little structure in the brain and both two structures in the brain. That is one is your amygdala and one is the hippocampus. The hippocampus retrieves back the old memory stating somebody is abusing you, accusing you. They are not going to do good for you. It could be a very simple reason. The brain does not understand if the problem is existing now or was it in the past or it is going to be in the future. 
it, it is seen everything as a present in the present because the moment there is a trigger in the environment about a trauma the brain starts thinking the hippocampus the mic daily it comes into action it says no you have a problem so this is where the, the, the relationship should spoil and the whole situation is is reinvented as something that happened already in the past it could be a repressed emotion or it could be an emotion that is coming out uh, that, that the child has been continuously exposed to and the child is still remembering that is very fresh in the memory. So if we notice any person like who undergoes a trauma, who undergoes a trauma or is in a state of continuous uh, traumatic disorder or in, or, or in a kind of a traumatic stress, we have to identify the different kind of behaviors that they exhibit. What are the various behaviors that a traumatic person exhibits? What are the various, uh, you know, the trauma responses? Or trauma responses when 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 a person who is in trauma detects a trauma the uh, the person sees or or gives these behaviors the first one is as we all would have heard the terms are very very common the first one is the fight response during the fight response a person can either bully get angry or you know or fight across or you know become so aggressive this is this is one kind of behavior or a response that we can often find in a person who is exhibiting this kind of fight response the second response we call it as the flight response the flight response is a response like where uh, you know they want to uh, avoid they want to avoid the situation because we often see this in families with ruptured relationship where a person is actually uh, states that he's overworking for a long time. He's overworking for a long time or, you know, he spends his extended hours in the office. He doesn't want to come home. He doesn't want to stay with the family. He doesn't want to, uh, you know, he avoids the situation. He overeats, he or she, it could be anybody, okay? They overeat, they overeat, you know, uh, or, you know, they, they're, they're fleeing away from the situation. This is the second type of response that a person in trauma, you know, they give it off. The third response is called the freeze response. When I say freeze response, this is a response where they shut down. They're, they're, they're physically present, but mentally absent. They dissociate from the situation or from the person. They don't want to be a part. They, they don't want to respond or react to the given situation. That is the freeze response. The fourth type of traumatic response that we can talk of is the flop response. When I say a flop response, they are paralyzed by fear with the moment they see the trauma, especially if, let us say, it has been a kind of a, a huge sexual abuse, you know, during childhood, or it could be huge emotional abuse uh, during childhood, where they have been instilled a lot of fear inside. Like when they see a trauma like this, you know, they, be, they, they get into a flop state where they are completely paralyzed by the fear and, and you know, they, they faint, they can't take the physical, they, they lose control of their physical self. This is another kind of response that we can talk of. The next kind of response that a person uh, uh, exhibits is the fawn response. Uh, and most of us would have seen people like if there is a situation, they become people pleasers. They do too much. They, they forget about their own needs and they go beyond to do something. They are they are always at, 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 the, uh, at the acceptance of, of, of somebody, you know. Uh, so they always need the approval of somebody. This is again a trauma. So this is the other kind of response, the fond response we are talking about, you know, where they become overwhelmed doing so much for others that, you know, they do it even at the cost of themselves, at the cost of themselves. So these are all the various responses that a person, uh, that a person uh, takes up or the person undergoes when there is a, uh, a when there is a traumatic trigger in front of them, in front of them. So, uh, so this is this is all about the basis of how or why a trauma 
is established in a person and, and how it is established in a person. I think today I will stop my masterclass with this. Tomorrow we are going to talk about strategies of how do we really handle this trauma, you know, at a personal level, at a professional level, eventually the professional support has to be taken up, but at a personal level, what we can do and how we can understand our inner child traumas that has been hidden in us for quite a long time and how are we going to handle the situation. With this, I thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity and thank you so much and great evening and all the very best for the other speakers. Thank you so much. Wow, you awesome. started very, very well with us this morning. Awesome sharing, Kavita. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> thank you so much, Professor Kavita. You've really, really, I mean, I'm hearing this for the first time. I'm not, I must Thank confess, you. and I need to learn more and more on this yep. as well. Because sometimes what happens from the, our background, from, from when they were childhood, can affect our ad, adulthood. Do you agree with me on that? Absolutely. At 70, I mean, that is the reason. That is the core reason. That's the reason why today <laughs> I thought, let me talk about the inner child traumas and how it translates into an adult personality. Unless we understand that, because something that comes in, it develops from the childhood. So this is so important to talk about it. Wow, amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank I you. really appreciate that today. So any questions quickly? Any questions from uh, Professor Karudin, Ambassador Anugu, and uh, Professor Dr. TPS? Any questions for I, Professor Kavita? I cannot Kavita? ask uh, Professor Kavita because I came in late. Yeah. Uh, okay. Dr. Shiva. Dr. Shiva should be asking the question. Okay. Dr. Uh, TPS. You are there. You are muted, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions? And thank you so much for joining us thank from you. Facebook. I can see that people are really, really enjoying the teaching this morning. And I really appreciate that. Identify the different kinds of behavior, the children or your kids. Okay. I don't know if that is a question or not. Um <laughs> Is that a question? I don't really know. Identify the different kinds of behavior the children or your kids exhibit. Is that a question? I think so. Uh, uh, I think I think it is a statement given because we spoke about the attachment styles and how it translates into a personality, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. That is really good. Um, yes, any other questions from the Facebook and uh, yeah, from... Um, Zoom link. Any other question? Because uh, Professor Kavita has really started very well with us, uh, breaking it down, the meaning of trauma and also to identify it. Um, and I like the way she started. She started from the child because like we said, this, this, this one can be um, uh, traces of some of our behavior sometimes. So we need to trace it down to that root. Because when we trace something from the root, then it's possible for us to be able to solve the some of our problems in relationship. So I want to say thank you so much. I believe um, they are still thinking maybe they will bring their questions tomorrow when you elaborate it and give us more steps and principles and strategies uh tomorrow morning so i want to say thank you so much thank for you. that yes. teaching today okay we need to quickly move on we have a lot of uh uh teachings a 